now that the possibility of not doing this shit seems real and I'm at peace with that, don't have a regret. J. Cole is back after hiatus of about three years since releasing a solo project. He comes back flaming hot with his latest single uh, or solo album, The Off Season, the start of uh, his, I guess, next three or maybe potentially last three albums of his career. If anything, he came with a lot to say. Absolutely. Yeah, I think one thing we need to highlight is just how he rolled out this album. I feel like we haven't had a proper album rollout since 2019 because of this whole pandemic thing. So I feel like it was a good choice to hold off on releasing this album, mainly because there was a lot to release during the rollout. Speaking of an entire documentary, highlighting the process or the thought process he was going through with this album. So let's talk about that. Yeah, going into the first thing, this documentary. Uh, yeah. What, what was that? Entailing. Uh, <laughs> it starts off with us getting to know really what the meaning of the album is, the off season, you know, what does that entail? And he, he really discussed it in detail. He dis he talked about how it calls back to his sophomore mixtape, the warm up. And he's always had this love for basketball. So he when discussing the purpose of the album, he said that it was gonna be the last time that he really hones in and tries to reach new heights before he quote unquote feels fulfilled in this game. It's referring to how athletes, you know, come back from their respective off seasons with new skills that they worked on. Example, Michael Jordan perfecting that that patent fade away, fade away towards the end of his career when his athleticism started to go a little bit. In general, there's a lot of basketball references and principles and all that in this album because one, Jake. Cole has shown a deep love for basketball, as you can tell by the fact that he played for the Rwanda Patriots and, you know, chased his dreams that way. But also, number two, when you get to a certain level, when you get to the highest level, rapping becomes almost like a sport. You know, Drake just talked about this with the whole Pusha T scandal thing that, you know, sometimes you you just have that competitive spirit with one another. And uh, one thing he also mentioned in the, uh, in the documentary was, it's something I feel is very important because it contextualizes the entire album. And that is that Revenge of the Dreamers 3, this album, The Off Season, the legendary feature run in 2018, as well as two items that are to be determined uh, we got titled It's a Boy and The Fall Off, which is presumably an album. It's actually all part of this bigger vision, which is the fall off era. J. Cole posted a note on his Instagram detailing this phase, kind of the sequencing of it. He kind of laid it all out for us, which is makes our job pretty easy. But uh, it's important to note that he described it in the documentary as this is the most ambitious shit I've ever done. For example, Middle Child, a single that was released in 2019, is actually something all the way in the fall off. It's, it's w the final piece of the puzzle and we got it all the way back. It was the very first thing we got from, you know, this whole era, which is amazing to think about. Kind of his last time honing in and coming back from a hiatus. It begs the question, is the off season the beginning of the end for J. Cole? Oh. Du -du -dun. <laughs> So before we get into our uh, deep dive here into the off season, we just want to say, please join us over on Our Thoughts Live. That's our live stream we do every Tuesday or Thursday of the week at 5 p.m. PST, 8 p.m. EST. We uh, have a little family over there. We talk music. We talk pop culture. We talk we talk movies. We have a good time. We yeah. have a good time, basically. We have a good time over there. So if you guys uh, want more of us, want more of our thoughts on things that we haven't covered in these videos, definitely take your time to go over to our live stream, which will be linked at the top link uh, in the description below. And while you're down there, go ahead and leave a like and subscribe and share with your friends so that we can grow this community and have an Our Thoughts summer. So appreciate you. Let's get into the deep dive. Starting off with 95 South, which I feel like was the absolute perfect record to come back to. It really helps establish the tone of the album. It feels like you're about to witness what people will call, you know, the golden days in a decade. Like, it feels like you're witnessing someone in their prime. We see Cole talking this shit, man. He starts off literally the very first line. This shit is too, way too easy for me now. <laughs> love that. <laughs> we get a really dope Steph bar, which I love, but let's be honest. I gotta highlight everyone's favorite bar. I be staying out the way, but if the beef do come around, could put a right on your head you luigi brother now obviously referring to everyone's favorite uh japanese italian plumber uh mario <laughs> mixed race plumber <laughs> yeah yeah racially ambiguous and uh did i mention that he was talking to shit man because uh he says later on look how everybody clapping when your 30 song album do a measly hundred thou 
Uh, that is referring to the current trend of rappers not releasing these albums that are longer than they need to be, you know, 18 to 30 tracks. That's usually done as an effort to increase streaming numbers and boost them up a little bit. J. Cole is mocking that despite all these antics that you guys try to do, you guys still end up with 100,000. And just to put it in perspective, the offseason had about, I believe, 268 off the first week, 268K. So the title, uh, 95 South, refers to driving south on the I-95 highway, which goes from Cole's second home New York to his home state of North Carolina and he actually recalls having to drive back and forth quote unquote back when Jeezy had the crown which is you know around mid to late 2000s he was signed with Def Jam J. Cole was signed with Rock Nation at the time this duality is reflected in the contributions we get uh, at the end you know with the rep rep your hood up represent <laughs> your click we actually get features from or not official features but contributions we'll say from two hip-hop icons both representing that duality that i mentioned before for, of j cole you know we have cameron repping new york and Lil John representing Cole's Southern roots as he comes from Atlanta, Georgia. It's just cool to see Cole start this legendary run that he's about to go on, you know, with this, the fall off era by paying respect to his roots. So again, sets the mood as all good intro tracks should. And he carries that momentum into Amari. One thing that to keep track of in this album, you know, this isn't exactly new to Cole or in just rap in general, but he compares his old life to what it is now a couple different times in this album, but keep track of all the different lenses he views them from, how he views them exactly, because at this point, the fame is still very flashy and fun. He talks about his old days as, you know, I, I want to escape from this. I'm imagining a, a Honda into a Wraith. Then he fast forwards. It. Now I'm at the garden sitting half court, watching Junior catch it off the bad boy. That's a reference to his appearance in the 20. 2019 NBA All-Star Weekend in, in the dunk contest, no less, where he actually helped Dennis Smith Jr., who was playing for New York at, at the time, obviously, his hometown team, and he actually helped him with his dunk, set him up with an alley-oop, also <laughs> dapped up Gabriel Union. Yeah, I think, what, like you said, with those first two tracks, those were kind of like his anthems, just coming in strong, yes. setting the record straight of where he lands in terms of context of the rap game, of other rappers where he's been for the past decade and what his success means to him. With that, he goes into the third track, My Life, with a killer 21 Savage feature, probably the hottest feature on this Ooh, album. Um, bringing in 21 Savage. Another kind of controversial take as J. Cole is known to have no features, kind of how the meme goes with uh, 2014 Forest Hill Drive, where he went platinum with no features as the meme, go meme goes. But yeah, I mean, with My Life, he goes into his first like introspective, you know, reflection type track as opposed to his bombastic in your face tracks he le led the record with. This song basically speaks on what their life would have been like if they didn't make the decisions they had in the past. He starts off with the line, yeah. Top of the morning, I know that you thought I was dormant. Another callback to saying, you thought I was done, you thought J. Cole was retired. I was asleep, now I'm woke, here I am. <laughs> he hasn't really said anything solidifying that he's retiring. He has hinted at it at pre in previous songs or features, like his track Jermaine's Interlude on DJ Khaled's Major Key album, where he ends the entire uh, track saying, Said all that I could say now I'll play with thoughts of retirement. He continues as he reflects on his past and family life, you know, being from family of generations poverty and how that he used to be like envious of his cousins or family members who would sling dope on the corner because they were making money or they were the hustlers they thought he thought that was the only way you could do that that's when we move on to 21 savages verse this verse mm. i know 21 savage was a savage like he came up from a very hard childhood a very hard adulthood he just lives a hard life, but I think he really painted that picture in this verse, saying, Say what? The stuff that I seen got me traumatized. I let the K go when Johnny died. Swinging that motherfucker side to side. Basically, this is a reference to 21 Savage's uh, 21st birthday, where his best friend was gunned down in a shooting that took place, leaving 21 in the hospital after being hit six times. And obviously, the loss Damn. of his friend Johnny was a huge huge toll for him he got a massive chest piece commemorating him on his album savage mode there's a a knife a dagger in the album art that has engraving it paying homage to johnny but then he follows up this line saying i got a good heart so i send teddy bears every time we make their mamas cry i think this is like the most savage line in this song if not one of the most hard-hitting lines that 21 has said basically kind of referencing yeah. to where whenever there's a homicide or there's like a, a death people usually make a vigil like at the location of where that person died one of those things they include in the vigil being like flowers candles and teddy bears basically 21 says 
oh he's a good person because to all the the ops that he's killed he'll send their mothers teddy bears for the vigil he's got a heart man i gotta Bruh. appreciate it he's yeah got, he's got principles <laughs> at least he's t like helping the family out but damn that's uh, insane <laughs> yeah literally um he ends the verse saying i got some partners who left this earth maybe the pain made a better one god just know that they secrets is kept with no god basically 21 lives a life of just constant pain and and suffering his best friend was shot and killed which i think he blames himself for since it was gang related uh his brother was recently stabbed in london like it's wow. always like some hardship going on in his life that fuels the pain and and fueled his incredible performance on this feature which only like true like anguish in someone's heart could get yeah. someone to to spit this hard on a on a feature but definitely one of the highlights and definitely one of the most probably the darkest corners of this album 21 savage was absolutely the right feature for this just because i feel like he's had the most character growth that we've seen absolutely you know yeah. ever since he's come into the spotlight he's just grown so much i remember with you know the amber rose stuff and that was a way for him to grow now and but now he's just this icon you know and i'm, I'm really happy for him i'm glad that he was able to to have this moment on this album and transitioning from from that track into applying pressure which is the first moment that we really get to breathe on the album you know we go from these first three songs are all hard hitting they're all super intense and very hype and then he kind of slows it down a little bit and as the title suggests cole decides to put the pressure on some of his peers you know he says uh, instead of capping why don't you talk about being a broke rapper that's a perspective i respect because it's real what it's like to be nice as fuck but gotta stress to pay the bills Obviously, that's referring to the fact that there are rappers out there who talk about their lavish lifestyle, but really they're just kind of rapping about the idea of it. He sees that they're just capping. And then in the second half, he, he puts a pressure on his haters by referring to them directly in one of my favorite moments on the album. It's absolutely, I just laugh every time I think about it. He's basically just telling them that they're wrong. It's it's so funny. It's, it's I love the contrast of him. In the first verse, he's using all these references and clever wordplay, and he references Hideo Kojima, at one point video game producer, uh, about to talk about like, you know, playing games. And then he just go, gets really blunt and really straightforward to you. And I'd imagine that this is the moment where the haters just like their blood pressure just rises you know listening to this because he's literally just clowning them on the record when he says stuff like if a nigga can't do it like you do it sometimes you gotta do it in front of his fucking face so he'll know forever damn that nigga did it how i always wanted to do it and i'll never be able to do it like that you know in the in the off season in the time that he's taking this break i'm pretty sure that that's all he's had to hear is people saying you know oh, you can't do it anymore you know you're not at that level it, it was just a fluke your run that you had well, he's doing it again, and he's going to do it with this fall off era, and you're just gonna have to, to cry about it. <laughs> and uh, and that I feel like perfectly describes this album. It's it's just him doing what he does, which, which tells me that you know if we're predicting the future albums real quick, that it's a boy, whatever that is. I don't know if it's an album, maybe an EP, just like maybe it's something completely different. And then we have the fall off. I think those projects will have lower lows because we do get some conflict here, a, a surprising amount of conflict actually, but. But it is still more of an exhibition of the skill and training that he's endured through these last couple of months or years or however long he's been before we get the meat of the fall off era, which I think will be really interesting. Excited to see what that is. And going into punching the clock and it starts and ends with interview clips from Damian Lillard, which is really cool because they've had this history of showing this mutual admiration towards each other, whether it be as hoopers, as rappers, whether it be in interviews, Twitter, you know, obviously J. Cole sampling Dame on the album. Dame even sh shouts out both Kendrick and Cole on his track Full Stomach. But tell you what you feed the mind ultimately grows, feed wisely. Now I'm just reaping what I sow. Can't just wrap up in my speakers. Kendrick and J. Cole. So the first couple of seconds come from a classic, iconic post-game interview from Dame, who has dropped a couple albums himself. He's he's a pretty good rapper. After carrying his team into the play-in tournament, which would give them an opportunity to get into the playoffs, and it was a very big opportunity for them. And Ending soundbite, however, is from a press conference after hitting really one of the most backbreaking shots, one of the most clutch shots you've ever seen, that essentially caused the whole franchise, the Oklahoma City Thunder, to trade their two best players and rebuild. It was just this really big iconic moment in basketball. Both of these samples encapsulate the spirit of the song and really the offseason as a whole. You don't just wake up having mastered your craft, you have to put in the time and when it matters most, fall back on whatever habits you built in that offseason. 
off season. It's kind of, you know, failing to prepare is pre preparing to fail kind of thing. Another thing I wanted to bring up from this track, man, it's the perspective thing that I was talking about with uh, comparing his new life to his old life. The first kind of three quarters of the verse where he talks about being around violence as a kid. Witnessing someone get murked or shot, you know, having his teacher reprimand him for playing with toys when it was actually a gun. And he details how that really affected him psychologically. He says he's teetering between enlightened and insanity. And then now fast forward to the present day. And he says, now that I'm rich, I feel nobody understanding me. All I can do is cut the mic on, holler at you. Can't let the fame scare me off from speaking candidly. Oh, man, I always, whenever I, I like, I'm like speaking these these bars I, I just feel so cool anyways <laughs> he's detailing these feelings of depression anxiety you know potentially PTSD that follows him to this day and it's something that he's going to have to continue to deal with the thing is he uses rapping you know as he says all I can do is cut the mic on holler at you he uses that to let go of all that which is something that is brought back during the album's climax we'll double back on that in a bit what you touched on in terms of like comparing his past life to his new life in those different perspectives that's basically i feel like one of the main themes of this entire album um, he talks a lot about his childhood the traumas of his childhood growing up in poverty but, and also death just growing up as a child and being exposed to that something very similar to what kendrick lamar talks about on damn you know, mm. all, like kind of losing his innocence, which is where I can totally understand where that PTSD or that trauma can come from. But it seems like, yeah, like you said, like it, he's using the mic music really as a way to cope, which is poetic, but also sad, like at the same time. Mm. It answers that question, like, you know, why are you still doing this? Is he, and it's because he needs to, this is therapy to him. And right. I think that's what separates him from those people that are trying to get in for the fame. You know, it's yeah. the thing to take away from these two songs, what I like about them so much is that it slows down the album, gives us a little time to reflect on Cole's journey, the hardships he's had to endure, man. It really makes you appreciate the moments we get like on 100 mil. This this song is one of my favorites off the, the album. It reminds me of a training montage in Creed or something. It, it literally feels like someone's fighting their demons. <laughs> and in this song, Cole speaks on the struggles of having to keep being the best version of yourself despite being on the level he's on, you know, being 100 mil rich. And he kind of details this on the documentary as well, you know, having to constantly reignite that flame the same way that, you know, basketball players have to during over the course of an 82 game season. And uh, one recurring trend that I notice in Cole's music is how he likes to kind of separate himself from a lot of the different subgenres of rap, you know, not disrespectfully or anything, but letting you guys know that he doesn't really belong in the same class as me or in the same category as me. For example, on ATM, he talks about how, you know, those clout chasing rappers, he's not really with that. In this case, he separates himself from the Freddie Gibbs and the Pusha T's, the Griseldas of the world. When he says, never pet a rat, never said a lot, only what need to be said. Basically saying he's never really pushed cocaine, he's never had to sell cocaine. You know, the Coke bars are kind of the trend nowadays. Right. Uh, so he's kind of putting himself out, out of that category in case I feel like anyone's looking for that from him, that he's not the guy. <laughs> and also, we do get a reference to retirement during the second verse, which I feel like is important to note. Uh, he says, it's not about the money, it's more about time. Shit makes sense when you see how it's been mine. Can't lead a day yet, I feel like LeBron. I think that comparison to LeBron is actually really important because they're both kind of at a similar point in their in their careers, in their respective crafts. They've already established themselves as some of the greatest we've ever seen, whether it be in rap or basketball. Uh, LeBron with, with basketball, okay, let me get that clear. He didn't, that A&R shit didn't really <laughs> pop off We're not gonna that talk well. about that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, no, but you know, they're great at what they do, but at this point, it's a matter of, you know, building that myth. For LeBron, it's, you know, chasing Jordan. Again, building that myth, that legend of J. Cole that they're gonna talk about in years to come. I can definitely see that in terms of like how they see themselves in the context of the game that they both are playing. Everyone's always talking about like, is LeBron done? Like, is he, can he really keep winning championships? Like, it's kind of the same thing with J. Cole. It's like, how many albums he's going to make? How many Billboard awards or whatever? How, how much, how far is he going to go until he's done? Because he's been hinting at that retirement and this off season and, and the rollout of these last three albums is him saying like, I still got a little bit of fight in me. Yeah. At this point, it's about doing something 
so memorable. And if this is the way to go, might as well go out with a bang. Right. So I think that's what we're setting up. You know, maybe in a couple years, we'll look back at this line and be like, damn, he set us up. Like he knew exactly what he was going to do and he did it. Right. So definitely one of the, one of those records that you want to play on your very, very, very last set. You know, you got to pump out that last bench press or whatever you want to <laughs> do. Uh, get this song on there, man. But uh, yeah. 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 Moving on to uh, the next track, Pride is the Devil. Mm. threw me off a little bit when i first heard it um right yeah i was like <laughs> i feel like i've heard this uh <laughs> i feel like i've heard this melody before <laughs> it's basically the exact same beat as amine's track but with a, just a little bit of like a different hi-hat pattern or something Cries the devil Think it got a hold on me. And it's literally by the same producer. He just really likes his melody or something, I guess. <laughs> but Pride is the Devil is another track where he kind of goes into his more introspective, more self-reflection. Obviously, starting off saying Pride is the Devil, think it got a hold on me. Pride is the Devil, it left so many. R.I.P. Think it got a hold on me. So basically saying like the devil or Satan is sometimes depicted as like an angel that rebelled against God. Mm. And he kind of embodies the world pursuit of material possession. He, or have a being hubris or, or excessively prideful. Uh, moving on saying that Thankful cause I made it past my thirties, no one murdered me. Still remember vividly the nigga that pulled a gun on me. This line is referring to a time where J. Cole was held at gunpoint, basically. And wow. he decided not to turn face and run and, and make the smart decision and save his life because of his pride. You know, he's like, I'm not gonna be the one to, to mm. not stand up for myself, which could have ended in in his potential murder. And so him recognizing like my pride can sometimes lead to my death and that I used to be a young naive kid who had too much pride, too much of a chip on his shoulder to really think logically about what am I doing? What is important in my life? It reminds me of uh, kind of the whole theme of KOD, right? This and uh, my life, I, what you were referring yes. to earlier. You know, KOD is about, you know, choose wisely. That's the thing that was constantly said throughout that album. At the end of the day, it really is about making those key choices despite all the things that are leading you down that, that path. You know, it, it's about making those hard choices. And in that case, he decided he was going to choose his pride over what would be the right choice which is just running right. away or whatever so right. yeah pretty interesting yeah but this song uh had a lot of people freaking out not just because of the, the heavy-handed um verses from j cole but also the insane little baby switch up in the middle that yeah. flow i want to just put a couple clips into here of all those reaction channels like going crazy over this uh feature when baby little baby comes in stack it up you reaching up acting up break it down weigh it up not back it up make a five of mine okay okay it came right Bro. in the right time the right Bro. way stack it up you reaching up acting up break it down weigh it up not back it up make a five of mine Up. You reaching up, acting up, break it down, weigh it up, not back it up, make a five. Oh, oh, no, oh, no, no, not like oh, that, no, oh, no, not like oh, this, no, 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 no,
basically too woke. <laughs> uh, yeah. Seen too much. Yeah. With this uh, nostalgic or this nostalgia for the past, it's coupled with this really nostalgic instrumental that plays that's like kind of makes me feel like I'm longing for what used to be. He says, talking about the beat itself. I probably heard it before, but slept on it, you know. Shit don't always connect as soon as you press play. At times you gotta step away, do some living. Let time provide a new prescription given. This line um, talks about how, and as an artist, sometimes like inspiration doesn't really strike immediately, especially when you hear a beat or, or when it's time to sit down and make something. You may not yeah. be as um, inspired at the time, but that doesn't mean like there's not potential there. All it takes is is time and this whole um track is about time similarly in life like sometimes you need to like walk away from something experience life and in, in a different way and gather that new perspective that new lens like you're talking about like and what i think is the most beautiful part of this track is in the next few lines saying today my son said dad let go of my hand reminded me of the day uh one day he's gonna be his own man and my job is to make sure he's equipped i gotta make sure he's not no bitch because dude's bound to try him. If I said I was the toughest growing up, I'd be lying. If I had a fear of getting punched while everybody eyeing, add that a constant fear of dying. Man, and so uh, those are some honest bars, man. Yeah, so basically Cole reflects on like his entire childhood and fatherhood at the same time. Basically saying like what it means to be a father, like watching his son grow, grow up in front of his eyes and how it reminds him of when he was his son's age growing up in um, Fayetteville where he's from and how he was this small, weak little kid, scared of the world, scared of being beat up, but on top of that, also scared of being killed because living in poverty or in the hood, and like there's a constant fear of death around any corner. And like growing up as a kid, living with that has been traumatizing. And so mm -hmm. he wants to prepare his son to make sure he doesn't have to live with that fear, but he can still you know, stand up for himself. He still has a, a good head on his shoulders and that he can basically fight back when he needs to because he knows son of J. Cole, people are going to try and talk shit. People are going to try and come after him and that he needs to be trusting that his son can, you know, keep his own. He continues where he reflects on a moment when he was very, very new to the rap game. Yeah, um, this is a very interesting moment right here. I yeah, the line is My last scrap was with Puff Daddy. I bought that nigga album in seventh grade and played it so much you would have thought my favorite rapper was Puff. Back then I ain't no shit. Now I know too much. So Cole reminds us of, reminds us of the beef he had with Puff Daddy in like 2013 when Puff approached Kendrick Lamar, his homie, at an MTV Music Awards show after party, where basically Puff threatened to like beat him up. He like tried to spill his drink on Kendrick because Kendrick claimed that he was the king of New York on the track Control. I'm Machiavelli's offspring. I'm the king of New York, king of the coast. One hand, I juggle them both. The juggernaut fell in your juggler. You take me for jokes. Basically, Cole like got up all, in, all up in his face and like super loud, trying to make a name for himself, trying to protect his homie. And like he had no mm. idea who he was talking to. Like he was very new to the rap game, very naive um, and very innocent during that whole beef. Comparing that to now where he would never do something like that. He's trying to stay out of everything. Um, mm. And now that he's all woke and wise, he's considered one of the greats. It's like, well, now he's kind of longing for that passion, like that eagerness of, of a young J. Cole and Kendrick back in 2013. And that is only exacerbated from this, um, the instrumental and how kind mm. of like solemn it is. Yeah. And, and also, I think what makes that song even more impactful is the fact that him and Diddy are actually cool now. If you saw that there is a video of them they're posing they're posing like they're ready to fight right like the, the fact that they're willing they're able to put in the past and even like make fun of it again with the posing it really <laughs> speaks to to the fact that j cole does what he preaches you know he doesn't he's not one of those uh what is it called when people don't uh do what they say uh liars <laughs> yeah sure liars go ahead and leave in the comment what word i should have used uh <laughs> but he's willing to squash any beef no matter how crazy it was at one point laying hands on diddy and this is definitely one of my favorite tracks man that beat that that woo, mm -hmm. that, that that like wooji sound it's a very interesting track i'm very nostalgic so i felt for this i felt this track a lot um yes. and it was just a cool bass of the, uh blast to the past so and the album picks back up too with, yeah. with this next track yeah obviously with the next track interlude the very first little bit we heard 
from J. Cole after a while, the first taste of the offseason that we got. This was a very purposeful move. What does he have to say? What, where is he, his head at? Where is he coming uh, from and going to in this next album? So obviously, mm. being the first track that we hear, it starts off super strong. I be coming in peace, but fuck me. Basically, I think this is him referencing the beef he had with No Name. Um, mm. he, like that whole debacle they had about basically who's the wokest out of each other and like, <laughs> and, and J. Cole was just like, yo, I'm just trying to have a dialogue. Just cause you woke and I'm not, that shit ain't no reason to talk like you better than me. How you gonna leave when you attacking the very same niggas that really do need the shit that you saying. And all of a sudden you're writing diss tracks to me. Niggas in the back, quiet as a church mouse. Basement studio when duty calls to get the verse. I guess the ego hurt now. Wow, look at him go. He really doubts to write about me when the world is in smoke. It's like. I'm coming in peace, but I guess fuck that. I guess we got a diss now. So at least that's what I think. Yeah. Um, it's kind of just a nod to that drama, but he mm. keeps going. Southern heat make them bearable. Summer just last week, seen your mama weep, crying cause she don't want to bury your brother. The blood leaks while the EMT gotta carry her baby like surrogate mothers. Cole kind of uses this analogy with the Southern heat as kind of like a double entendre. Obviously it gets very hot in the summer in the South, but during those hot months, gun violence rises. The most gun deaths in America are in the South. In practice, this leads to like very similar scenarios, which she describes like as a mother weeping as her son dies in front of her eyes, like very traumatic experiences that he's had to witness, you know, the weight of gun related uh, violence yeah. and how it's become more prominent in the streets nowadays too, during the summer, which leaves a very cold, cold winter to follow. And he ends yeah. the track by calling back to Nipsey and, P and Pipsy, who were both killed, both killed by due to gun violence and both killed in their thirties. Something that J. Cole has been contemplating for the past few tracks that we talked about how thinking he should have been killed years ago the way he was living where he was growing up he's just thankful that he's alive and able to rap and do what he does because a lot of people like him aren't lucky enough to even say that so i think this track coming out as the first single from the album basically lays out all the major themes of this whole album where He's lucky to be alive. He's lucky to be here coming off a pandemic, but also reflecting on the past 30 years of his life and his career and where he ends up now. I think this was the, the perfect record to put out at the time, especially, you know, after everything that had happened with the resurgence of the Black Lives Matter movement uh, in, you know, these last, this last decade, actually. It was absolutely necessary to hear, you know, J. Cole's uh, thoughts on that and, and also the fact that it didn't really give much away at the time you know we still really didn't know what to expect from the album for transitioning into to the climb back mm -hmm. uh, we got this all the way back in 2020 actually it starts off with this quote from uh, it's an excerpt from the tower of leadership and he says are you doing this work to facilitate growth or to become famous which is more important getting letting go he discusses this in the documentary and i said it before you know what's going to keep you from slipping when you get there you know when you when you get all that stuff that you sought out to do you know what's going to keep you hungry what's going to what's going to reignite that fire you know you see a lot of athletes put up these great numbers really get my my nba 2k rating up <laughs> and and you see a lot of them they fall off because you know at this point they're good they gotten they've gotten everything they worked for the same applies for rap where you see these rappers they come out with these amazing albums and they get everything they wanted for and then they kind of fall off or maybe not even an album maybe it's just even a single and they achieve that viral fame that they've sought after and now they have it and then they just kind of go by the wayside but the second line of that are you getting or letting go it's a callback to punching the clock are you in this just to receive all the fame and the money are you in here to get stuff or is this because you really need something to channel that passion or like we were saying before with j cole having to channel all that that depression anxiety that ptsd that he's been holding in and rap is how he expresses that and that's what, what's going to keep him sustainable that's what's going to keep him working and that's why he's still putting out albums to this day it was very simple very beautifully put let me take a break real quick from the lyrics just to talk about the flows that he caught on here man survival at all costs every day niggas get logged off bodies get hard off the times to be feeling the devil be winning but do that mean god lost generational like i <laughs> meanwhile i see that your diamonds is glistening i'm glad that you shine up and need i remind you my niggas is diamond and nickel scraping or whatever coin they can find a petty is trying to commit in it but uh, if i'm going to the first verse man it's great because you can literally feel j cole 
kind of getting more and more confident if you listen closely to his cadence, his inflection. Because at this point, he's gone through this whole journey almost off screen, you know, during his off season. He knows why he does this. It's a self-affirmation at this point that he, he does what he does. In the second verse, he takes a spotlight off of himself and, you know, let me talk about you guys real quick. You know, he talks about one of his friends who became quote unquote addicted to clout and was jealous because he, he felt like he could be in Cole's shoes. It's a call back to that jealousy's itch line from applying pressure. He's discussed this in past songs as well. Two days before releasing the song, Cole put out an essay called The Audacity, where he discusses several key periods in his life. He actually discusses like what he was good at, what he was bad at, so go check that essay out if you'd like. He uses a lot of imagery actually of climbing mountains, which is, you know, a call forward, a call back. It's a call to his, you know, the climb back. And it was such a climactic moment in the album. Yeah, I feel like just an interesting, like, introspective uh, take on where he's come from and some lessons, I guess, that he's learned along the way. In case any of you guys become $100 million richer, you can listen to J. Cole tell you how to deal with that. But uh, Yeah, lays yeah. out the blueprint. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah, it's very, very reminiscent of Jay-Z in that way where he's literally giving you advice. And also one thing to note that this, this album kind of perfectly goes through the hero's journey arc. Classic literature, uh, literary terms where th this is the necessary kind of uh, bumps and bruises that the hero has to get. Rising action and get into your climax and falling action. These last couple of tracks have kind of built up to this climb back we go into this the next track close which we actually get kind of this heartbreaking story it's about this uh one of his old friends that he was really close to childhood friend since 12 years old and he unfortunately got into hard drugs and that ended up deteriorating the the friendship in a couple of different ways whether it be the jealousy thing again the song culminates in him in j cole waking up from his nightmare that he has of his friend, you know, getting shot from these these people who he didn't even see coming, only to find out that the friend had actually been murdered in real life. He says, Open up my eyes with a joke, heart pumping like you saying both. Reach for my phone, miss calls and a text message note for my mama saying you just got smoked, then this life is no joke. The placement of the song after the climb back was meant to show that despite him being that dude, he's still going to have to deal with these feelings and these memories, these painful memories for the rest of his life. Just because he has worked himself into being one of the greatest rappers we've ever seen doesn't mean he's exempt from feeling these emotions. The storytelling on this is really in intriguing. Like it's, it's mm. like in the beginning, I thought he was actually describing a dream that he had and like having that twist in the end, I was like, oh shit, like <laughs> posing it as if he's describing a dream only to tell us that it's a reality, I thought was a really effective way of not only storytelling, but like showing us the harsh reality, the immense weight that this carries on internally. Definitely getting into one of the more darker like pockets of the album only to kind of let us uh, fade away into the final, uh, final track. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for that transition, man, because we go right into Hunger on a Hillside, which is very much kind of a fade to black. You know, it's like an end credit song. He ends the album by reaffirming that he's going to be that same guy. You know, he's going to have that same hunger for success, you know, Hunger on the Hillside, despite being successful. You know, he says, The money might fade, but respect don't. Still going to be me when success gone. And like Cole says on the climb back, you know, everything comes back around full circle. And uh, the album's first song actually starts with, like we said before, a reference to driving south on the I-95, interstate connecting these two homes. Meanwhile, the album ends with Hunger on Hillside, which is a reference to Hillside Avenue, which is a street in Queens, New York. And you'd actually have to drive north to get to from North Carolina. So kind of a reference to having him having to drive back and forth from North Carolina and New York. And, and again, it represents, you know, kind of the ups and downs of life that he's had to endure, you know, going up, it can go down. Either way, nigga, I'm prepared. And it's just appropriate that J. Cole ends this album by saying, you know, despite all this, whether it be positive, negative, He's still going to be J. Cole. He's still going to be Jermaine. He's still going to be that guy. It's a, it's a very reaffirming thing to the fans, self-reaffirmation. And it's, uh, again, a really good setup, I think. I think this is uh, going to be what the realm we're in for these next two, whatever it is. It's a boy. The fall off is, I think, going to be an album. I think this was a peak of kind of what the lows are going to look like. And uh, uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I feel like to, uh, when this song ended, I knew that he had more to say. Like I mm. knew this wasn't the end. Um, if anything, this album feels like a prelude 
to the main course, the main, yes. um, the main chunk of, of what he's trying to get at. And I feel like it's so complicated. He's done so much self-reflecting that he needs several albums to get to mm. that point. And so that was my main takeaway from this whole thing is that, oh, like J. Cole's not done. Like he's got, he's only just begun. Uh, yeah. Whatever this off season is, whatever that that character arc moment will be, we've only just started the journey, and I just can't wait to see uh, where he goes from here, what he's discovered, what he has to say about the culture, about where he's grown up, or the context of where we are in terms of uh, uh, society and and how the world sees him versus how he sees the world. I feel like as of right now, the main character, the superhero, this is kind of his origin, the backstory. uh, And and now we get to see where uh, his trajectory uh, lands him and excited to see where it leads. Uh, Yeah. Yeah. In closing, you know, we don't get too many mentions of retirement uh, from this album, which is intentional. I don't think he wants you to think about retirement when we're just starting this era out. You know, I think of like the last dance, you know, they went on this run of three championships right three pete they weren't thinking about the last one when they were on still that first championship they were just thinking about putting the best product out there and winning that ring that's kind of what j cole is doing he's still living in the moment and you know he, he's playing with the thoughts like you mentioned in that DJ, dj khaled song and and like he says now that the possibility of not doing this shit is real now i've had peace with that i don't have a regret another thing to look out for is what what else does he have to say about his career as a to end his career you know he, it feels like he's gonna end with a big bang uh but you know as for right now man I, all i have to say to the whether you're a cole fan whether you're a cole hater whether you just listen to hip-hop just enjoy greatness man just sit back we're only gonna get a few more albums from this dude just enjoy just enjoy because this is gonna be some something, something to witness So yeah, thanks for sticking around if you're still here. That was our deep dive, our deep analysis of J. Cole's The Off Season. If you want to see our review of J. Cole's The Off Season, go ahead and click the link in the description or on the title card right here. It'll be linked uh, for you to go ahead and check that out. But we appreciate you for making it this far. Go ahead and check out our live streams. We stream on Tuesday or Thursdays of every week, 5 p.m. PST, 8 p.m. EST. That link will also be in the description right next to that subscribe button and like button appreciate you guys uh, yeah also let us know uh what did we miss what are what are some of your favorite moments on the album what are you guys looking forward to on the fall off man let us know anything you want us to know and uh we'll be we'll be chilling in the in the comments section saying hi to you guys and uh we'll see you around guys yeah we'll see you in the live streams so thanks again peace out